let's say I use my fingerprint to authorize my laptop to start booting and also like say um, when the system is locked which is a Chromebook and I use the same fingerprint biometric data to unlock the system and then I was wondering like what could be the underlying technical uh, hardware or software which is handling it and then I opened up the Chromebook on the other day and figured out this biometric is basically connected to a microcontroller. It's like not directly connected to the Intel processor which is handling the operating system itself. So I was figuring out like, okay, trying to desolder this Chromebook because it's because of old and figure out if, it, uh, if I could dump the content out of it and uh, figured out that like the content itself is completely encrypted and also like the software itself is not known. So being that stage, so can I trust this particular device storing this biometric sensitive information of mine? And uh, can this be uh, moving forward like Chrome is using, Chromebooks are using the microcontrollers from a specific vendor and using Zephyr in its uh, underlying hardware and software mechanisms. So can we do Zephyr secure OS on that particular aspect? So. Today, we're going to speak about that particular part in short brief. The talk is uh, within 20 minutes, so we will keep it that way. So, uh, my name is Parthiban, and uh, I'm part of Linumis, a company which is doing embedded Linux software consulting and uh, Zephyr software consulting in, in uh, drivers, BSV development, and I primarily live in Berlin. So today we're going to see about the overview about the bootloader which is handling the secure boot for Zephyr or similar operating systems like uh, let's say NetX or uh, Minute, uh, common one. And then we will see what is the chain of trust and how does it start from the root of trust uh, using the MCU boot. And uh, we will see how to you can protect this keys to use sensitive information or you can encrypt the user data or even the application image itself. So. To start off with, uh, what is an MCU boot? Like there are multiple other past presentations from the maintainer David Brown from Linaro. You can have a look, but in short, uh, my, my MCU boot itself is an OS independent, uh, 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 my bootloader, which is handling two uh, primary problems to solve. One is the reliable software update. When I say reliable software update, it is like not uh, going to help in downloading the uh, image and flashing it, but instead after downloading it, it's going to help in swapping between the active partitions. So that's the other part of this. And we had uh, another talk in OS Summit and multiple other uh, people contributed towards this already. You can have a look. And today's uh, session is mostly about secure booting part of it and how do you achieve secure booting with MCU boot. So before that, um, in a short brief, how does your memory layout looks like in, in, in a nutshell for MCU, when you enable MCU boot in Zephyr Autos. So that's the start of offset where you have the MCU boot and you will have a couple of images uh, based on your configuration. Let's say if your system is uh, having multiple uh, SOCs like M33 and M4 combined, then you will have probably like more than uh, this image slots, let's say multiple image slots. And MCU boot supports multi-image slot as well. There are other talks which you can figure out. But in a nutshell, you can figure out this as a uh, basic layout. Either it is derived from the device tree configuration or the flash map, uh, which I give it as a snippet here. And also there are vendors like Nordic, which is using a set of uh, um, YAML configuration or other methodologies to arrive at the same flash map. So that like either you come from device tree or from any other mechanism, end of the day, it's a flash map where you define the memory layout of it. So what we're gonna see is like how MC boot helps in booting, secure booting the uh, image which is living in the slot zero. So when I say slot zero, uh, it could be Zephyr, it could be uh, other OS like Nutex or Minute, or for the fact like we also tried booting in bare metal application using MCU boot uh, using a signed image. So that's also possible. So that's an answer. So uh, starting with the chain of trust, uh, the root of trust lives in where? So the root of trust lives in the ROM itself in all the scenarios or most of the scenarios because uh, that's the first point of code executes when the CPU comes out of the reset and then it starts executing uh, a set of instructions and try to load the first stage bootloader which is living in the external storage, which could be primary flash or quartz wipe flash, which is 
uh, having the operating system itself or the bootloader itself or whatsoever the content which is living in the external memory. So the root of trust starts from the ROM code. So when I say ROM, uh, it's actually bound towards which is the SOC uh, uh, manufacturer or which is the uh, mechanism which they use. So uh, you can consider like ESP32 from Express of using uh, a set of secure boot mechanism from the ROM code. Uh, let's say IMX NXP series use a set of another set of mechanisms due to the, uh, uh, use the ROM secure booting. And like it varies from one vendor to another. Like so I, I'm not going to detail about that particular part, but instead like briefly say how we solved a scenario with NXP uh, IMX RT series of SOCs. So that's the first stage. I'm going to give a simple example here. So in this case, um, I, this is an inheritance of uh, what we did in the Linux uh, platform, basically. So Linux use uh, extensively about the secure boot. We tried to inherit the same thing for Zephyr as well. The first stage ROM basically has a capability called high assurance boot in IMX series. And we use this IMX hub that is like high assurance boot series, um, high assurance secure boot uh, option to boot the MCU boot itself. So when I say MCU boot itself, so this next stage image can be signed or even can be encrypted based on the uh, hardware support which you have. So right now this particular representation which gives you an overview about how the signing of the MCU boot itself works. Say um, there is like a concept called super root key, which you generate from a uh, proprietary tool from um, NXP, which is the uh, CST code signing tool. And you generate a set of private keys and uh, basically you uh, uh, compute hash of the MCU boot and sign the hash and append it together with the MCU boot itself. So it's not about, I mean, like it's just concatenation you can assume, but like there are set of uh, rules you have to make this concatenation. I will show you in the next slide. And once that is in place, you will also have to flash the hash key into the OTP region of the IMX series. So as I said before, it's specific to super specific to IRMX series from NXP, but it could be a different OTP register or a different uh, set of hardware capabilities based on which SOC you choose. So basically you choose, uh, flash the hash key into the IRMX series in the fuse and then you kickstart the system. When you kickstart the system, ROM card basically pulls the image from the primary flash or the external storage bootable medium and put the image directly into the RAM. When I say RAM, there is a secure RAM, uh, common SRAM, on-chip RAM and multiple factors in there. In specifically towards this IDOTMX series, we have on-chip RAM, which is OC RAM, and uh, which is accessible only by the high assurance boot during the boot sequence. So that basically verifies uh, the hash, meaning like it would compute the MCU boot's hash and also cross checks with the CSF data, which is the command sequence file data, uh, which is appended as part of the MCU boot. So that's how you basically verify in the ROM stage. So I mean, this is in a nutshell, like how does the MCU boot look like when you sign it together? Let's say sign it together with the code signing tool. Um, so there are a couple of restrictions or I would say recommendations which you have to think before choosing your SOC or hardware because um, the image itself is going to live in the on-chip RAM uh, during the boot sequence. So you have to consider the size of the image. Either you choose a higher sized uh, OC RAM SOC or you can compress or strip your MCU boot to fit into this particular region so that like the whole image is going to be copied into the SRAM or the OC RAM for secure booting. And one other point is like the device must be in closed state. When I say closed state, uh, device usually shipped with you to uh, sit back to you like in, in a way like in a development purpose. You you deploy the development keys and use for development purpose. But for the production purpose, you fuse the real release keys and then uh, close the device. When you close the device, the keys cannot be modified or uh, the device cannot be uh, tampered with and it is immutable altogether. So that state needs to be considered when you produce uh, devices of that, uh, let's say, secure state. So having said that part, as I said before, like ROM code to MCU boot, you can do with uh, multiple other SOZ vendors like Espressive does a uh, different scenario, which is similar, let's say in a private public, public key infrastructure combination, they do the same thing, but the fuse keys would vary and the offsets would vary. So otherwise, the next stage in the chain of trust is MCU boot itself. So the MCU boot basically uh, helps in booting the next stage uh, operating system, which is Zephyr in this case. How does this is handled? So once again, the same rule applies in terms of signing. Uh, you need a private public key combination and you take the uh, Zephyr uh, OS image and compute the hash 
that's sort of 56 value and store the hash directly into the TLV section. So when I say TLV section, it is basically appended together with the MCU uh, or the image itself, let's say the uh, slot zero image itself. So it would store the hash value and basically this hash is uh, signed using the private key and the signature value is also maintained in the um, TLV section. So. Uh, the size of the signature varies based on the algorithm which you choose. Let's say if you choose uh, RSA 2048, uh, the size would vary and then like ECDSA and multiple other supports are available with MCU boot based on which you can choose which algorithm you can choose. So that's uh, the, basically the key point here. And one other point which, you, which I wanted to emph uh, emphasize here is the SHA value for the public key itself is also uh, part of the TLV section. So make note of this one because like this is the one which is going to help in terms of uh, retrieving it from the hardware instead of the uh, placing it plain in the MCU boot itself. So during the verific, I mean, that's about the signing process in the host side. So in the target side, how does it verifies? Let's say the reverse or the counterpart action would use the public key and take the signature from the TLV section and basically it computes the hash of the Zephyr image and then uses the, uses the verification algorithm which you choose during the compile time. It could be RSA2048 and so, and then the validity is verified there. So it's a, uh, again the same representation together with the same hash values which I mentioned in the previous slide. So basically it's compute the SHA and uh, cross checks which um, key hash needs to be used and uses the verification mechanism here and then verifies whether it is a valid image or uh, invalid image technically. So uh, what is the role here for having a secure boot with hardware keys basically? So the key hash value which we spoke earlier, uh, basically the hash of the public key itself stored as part of the TLV section, uh, which is part of the slot zero image. So if one could access the primary flash and dump it or change the content, eventually the whole idea about secure boot is gone floss. Like, so then like how do we protect the uh, section by verifying that particular image's integrity or uh, integrity during the boot sequences. So that's the key point here. So MCU boot provides a couple of mechanisms to uh, use a hardware key uh, to do this. So one is enabling the hardware key itself. This means the hash of the public key is doesn't need to reside into the TLV section of the slot zero image. Instead, you can pull this um, image uh, or the uh, hash of the public key from external storage. So when I say external storage, it could be your OTP register or it could be TPM or it could be HSM modules which is connected uh, into the physical SOC. So basically um, the sample which I'm gonna show, show next is basically on the OTP register, but then technically we have scenarios to use the TPM, uh, scenarios to use the HSM module, uh, PKS, PKCS11 uh, algorithms to choose this particular uh, retrieval of the key. So that's technically possible. That is one way of verifying it. There is one other way which can be done is um, keeping the whole public key itself into the um, end device secure region. I mean, in, in the previous scenario, like the public key itself lives within the um, image, but uh, and then the, we verify only the integrity by checking the hash of that public key. So instead of that, there is another option which is you can use it like keep the whole public key secure fr from your secure device. So you can use the same uh, set of mechanism like storing it into the OTP or TPM or any any form of secure modules inside the in, inside your hardware. So that's that's how you technically do the secure booting either with hardware keys uh, storing the. Uh, public key hash and retrieve it using this particular API implementation, or you can use the uh, use this another option which is uh, shown here, like built-in key, wherein you store the whole public key into the secure storage. So this is a snippet uh, as an example. Once again, um, I'm not I mean like not showing any real real examples and uh, runtime examples because the time is limited here. So. The example here shows an um, OTP register which is basically trying to retrieve the uh, hash of the public key and then giving it back to the MCU boot for the verification. So basically this hook is invoked by the MCU boot and then you, uh, whatever the storage mechanisms which you use here, it could be OTP, it could be TPM, you implement other set of scenarios to uh, retrieve the key uh, of, I mean the hash of the public key and then uh, 
back to the here. Like it, it basically uses this mechanism, like instead of taking it from the TLV section, it basically uses the hook to verify that. So that like you have an integrity there that if your image itself is tampered, then eventually it will not be valid and then it says this ima image will not be booting in there. So that's about in, um, in a nutshell. So otherwise, uh, in, in, in a whole picture again, so ROM is immutable. Um, there is the next stage which we spoke is MCU boot itself to verify. Basically, um, MCU boot itself is a bootloader which could have security bugs, which have updates in the uh, past uh, for addressing various CVEs. And then in that scenario, you could probably have another immutable bootloader, uh, which, I sell, which, I, which, is, which is also immutable by meaning the protected uh, flash regions. You cannot change or write in that particular uh, region to change the bootloader. But then the MCU boot itself can be updatable by meaning uh, you, you can update the MCU boot and as well as Zephyr Autos or the other, other part of the operating system, let's say, over the air or other mechanisms, like say if you have physical access of different uh, update mechanism. But then the primary thing is like ROM and then the first stage bootloader, which is the uh, which could be again MCU boot itself. You can strip it to keep it under, let's say, 16 kilobytes of storage and then runtime of like 8 kilobytes. And then that's what we are trying to do and uh, with, with our use cases. So in that way, like you, you have an updatable MCU boot uh, for fixing the, let's say, security bugs, and then Zephyr Autos itself is updatable in the chain of trust. So speaking about uh, the loss point in this uh, use case is about, say, we have ARM V8 based SOCs, which is, let's say, uh, an RF91 or uh, Cortex M33 based SOCs, which have uh, trust zone in, into it. Let's say you can use this trust zones to do the secure boot on top of it. Let's say um, you, you boot the secure image and non-secure image from the MCU boot perspective, and uh, the uh, authentication or if at all any form of communications this related to security or verification itself basically goes through the um, uh, access APIs between the secure image and as well as the non-secure image, which is the rich world environment, which is Zephyr Autos in this scenario. So there is a talk uh, in the past about this. I'm not going to detail about each point which is described here. You can refer to that. And otherwise, um, what we are currently doing uh, in in-house is basically like we achieved this uh, AMX series based secure booting or in fact like ESP32 based secure booting. So that basically varies from one hardware to another. So you cannot change the ROM portion of the booting. But wherein like the MCU boot basically unifies this in terms of secure booting the next stage operating system. So how do we add this support back to the Zephyr? I mean, we have like custom patches which is living in our uh, tree, working together various stuff, but we are trying to abstract the hop support in MCU boot by meaning like adding into the Zephyr Autos itself. Also providing an infra wherein like you can use additional trusted sources. When I say trusted sources, it could be TPM or it could be um, Hutchison modules. When, I, when we say like TPM, there is an existing library which is currently uh, used by Linux, but unfortunately we cannot inherit because of the licensing issues. So we are trying to find a way to given smaller infra wherein we can provide a basic trusted sources like TPM, um, let's say hub or any form of hardware resources which we can use during the authorization for, let's say, MCU boot to Zephyr Autos uh, for the secure booting. So that's in a nutshell uh, into my presentation. Otherwise, uh, there is like links towards uh, various slides which is actually been referred to. You can take a look. Otherwise, uh, that's uh, the talk about altogether. Thank you so much. I think I have, I think we have like a couple of minutes for questions, if any. Yeah, sure. Why is it not good enough to put the public key into the MCU boot image itself? Because it's anyway uh, verified by the, the ROM boot loader. Yeah, you can uh, currently... It's Sorry? Repeating. Uh, yeah, sorry, I missed it. So the question is, so why is it not safe enough to place the public key into the uh, image itself? Why is it not safe? So in a nutshell, like you can place it uh, when uh, you have uh, integrity towards the key hash itself. I mean, you can verify the key hash, basically. You cannot, uh, I mean, you, you already verify the integrity. That's a default option which we have when we use MCU boot hardware keys. But if you have more storage in a way, uh, storing more, let's say, 256 bytes or let's say 512 bytes of uh, OTP region where you can protect the public key itself. So that's one other option. That's it. 
So, uh, if I understand correctly your question, so let's say back to the first slide. So, here in this stage, like ROM verifies the uh, MCU boot, and your question is like, why should we keep the public key? Why should not we keep the public key within the MCU boot itself? Or Yeah, that's what, like, uh, the uh, the same question, I think, um, to answer in a nutshell. Like, you can, uh, this is the option which I said, like, either you store the hash of the public key to verify the integrity that the public key itself is not tampered, or if you have an option to store more secure region, then eventually we can um, store that whole public key as well. That's the idea. Yeah. This, Otherwise, the... Secure storage, but you can also store it in MCU boot binary itself. Yeah, that's the default options which we have right now. When we when we when we have like MCU boot hardware keys. Yeah. But why would you do anything else? <laughs> I mean, like there is an option to store. I mean, like I mean, when we when you just like completely um, in the different OS. Let's say you run a TFA and then uh, use a public key infrastructure API like PSA API to uh, access the other OS. Basically, times is up. Sorry about that. Like we can catch it up uh, off of this time and then discuss about it if you have more questions. Sorry.